What's up, guys? You're listening to the Hustle Inspires Hustle podcast with Alex Quinn on Revolver Podcast. I'm an investor and entrepreneur, and throughout this journey, I've worked with and come across some incredible people and experiences that I would like to share with you. On the podcast, my celebrity guest and I will be talking about self-development, entrepreneurship, and overall hustle. If you want to survive this journey, you'll need a strong support system. So we got here as fast as we could. This is Alex Quinn, and you're listening to Hustle Inspires Hustle. It's up to you, What's going on, guys? This is Alex Quinn with the Hustle Inspires Hustle podcast, live from East Hampton with a very special guest. I got my brother, Brian Breach, here, and we're taking over the entire state. We are here for NetCon event. If you haven't heard about it, look it up. We were going to be speaking there this week, engaging with the audience, teaching people marketing, teaching people everything they have to do to be them best selves. Brian Breach is a great friend of mine who has actually recorded another podcast episode with me, and he's going to be dropping it soon with me. You guys got to stay, stay posted for that one. But we wanted to take the moment to really record this one to talk to you guys about something that's very, very, very important in the space right now. And it's learning how to properly network with people so you could build your audience, build your business audience, build your bank account and grow as a whole. So without further ado, I want to introduce my brother, Brian Breach. What is up, brother? Thank you for having me on the podcast today. I'm blessed to be in the Hamptons with you guys, speaking at NetCon. Let's talk. All right, you guys. So let's dive right into it. The people that are listening to this want to get actionable tips about how they could grow their business, how they could grow their career, instead of just hearing a bunch of random stuff that's really not doing anything for them. So we recognize these guys. We're hearing what you guys are saying. The Hustle Inspires Hustle brand as a whole is blowing up. We have millions of impressions around the world. Our jiffies are blowing up. We're doing events worldwide. We've been in Bali. We've been in Miami. We've been in Tampa. We're now we're in the Hamptons. We're doing all types of incredible things, and it's through the power of networking. So let's dive right into it. Let's talk about how we're here, okay? Brian and I actually met on Instagram, okay? Mm-hmm. We've, it's, it's been so long that we forgot who hit each other up first, <laughs> but the point is, is that we weren't afraid to hit each other up yeah. and actually engage with each other. But one important thing that I've talked about in this podcast and another podcast that you may have heard me on is the importance of bringing something to the table. If you're going to hit somebody up because you want to do something with them, don't just aimlessly come to them asking them for something because people recognize this. If you have something to bring to the table for somebody, they're going to be more prone to listening to you and wanting to do or engage with you in any specific way. So Brian, why don't you talk to me a little bit about everything that you do networking wise, because you're networking king, bro. You're everywhere. You have billboards everywhere. You're on TMZ, you're on the news and you do this through the power of relationships that you build. What is, if you're going to, if you're speaking to a young entrepreneur right now that wants to build their business, wants to talk to people, wants to be able to pull off the things that you've been able to pull off, what is the best way to present yourself? Right. So, so I come from the music space and a lot of times artists would send me music. We had a hip hop blog called, we had a hip hop blog called uh, get that paper son.com. And what I started noticing with these young people that didn't know how to network properly, they would literally just send me a link to their YouTube, a link to their SoundCloud, a link to whatever music, not say a word or just say something like, check this out without saying, you know, what I respond to the most is when someone at the very least says, Hey, how are you? How's your day going? Can you now check this out? You have to you have to approach somebody in the right way. You don't want to approach someone too aggressive on social media because that's the way to connect these days. You don't want to just send a link. And if you're going to hit somebody up, you got to have something to bring to the table. Just don't approach somebody in the way like, hey, check out my YouTube link. Can you reshare it? You know how many times this day and age that people ask me to reshare something without even a simple, hey, Brian, I like your stuff first. All I want to hear is something simple like, how are you doing? How stroke, stroke my ego real quick. You know, no, not, not necessarily about the <laughs> ego, but something along the lines of not just coming and asking me for a favor immediately without knowing me. Get to, I mean, even take three seconds out, to, out your data, have a mini conversation first, and then build up to it. Not, hey, dog, can you post this stuff? Come on. You know, that, that's not the proper way to network. And, and honestly, the, the social media space has changed a lot over the last few years. Before, if you had a good following, if you're ver- you're verified, and you know you're one of the cool guys out here, you know, um, if you're, it, it, it was a little, you know, it, it opens up a lot of doors. Yeah. But with automation, with bots, with with, with auto responses, it's gotten to a point where people mass text people, mass DM people, and it's not really personalized anymore. So even though you might understand that somebody's hitting you up because they want to work with you, it's not personal. It doesn't have that personal touch. Right. 
And I've actually touched on that on an episode that we recently dropped um, that we talk about how to connect with people on the direct message. Right. Okay. Um, instead of sending them a random text message saying, hey, share this, it's maybe you could send them a video. Hey, what's up, Brian? Yeah. I love the prank you did at the American Airlines Arena. I saw that it went viral. I want to be able to connect with you. I feel like I could bring something to the table for you and vice versa. You know how much more respect that I have for somebody that does that as opposed to just coming at me with, hey, share this. I have so much more respect for someone that will send me a video and just take three seconds out their day to, to come at me in that way as opposed to the other way. And, and, the, and also, like when you speak to sales guys, they talk all about the law of average. The more people you hit up, you know, the more people you're bound to work with right. that they're get, that are going to say yes obviously you're going to get a bunch of no's but again guys let's say that you're trying to build your business you're trying to build a brand you're trying to do something on social media you also don't want to hit up a bunch of people because you feel like they may be able to help you or because they're verified or because they're famous you should actually be hitting people up because you feel that they genuinely through and through bring something to the table for you that is of intrinsic value right okay so don't just be hitting up people for no reason hit people up that are qualified towards what you want to do right they could help you build their brand they could help you with credibility they could help you with a lot of things that could actually propel you forward so you know and that being said we've already talked about social media connecting on social media if you guys want to learn a little bit more about that go back to the episode about how to connect with people on instagram but this episode we really wanted to concentrate on talking to people about how to actually connect with people at events because one thing is texting somebody on instagram or sending a quick video where you're in your comfort zone of your home your car you know you don't you know you're, you're not in in a full-on engaged face-to-face -face conversation but another thing is showing up to an event by yourself or maybe with a friend and having to speak to all these people who are already crowded up bunched up probably know each other that could be nerve-wracking for a lot of people it's been, it's been nerve-wracking for me um nobody's perfect we all have our insecurities we all have our shit but at the end of the day we know what we're capable of yep. so i mean when you show up to an event one of the things i always always like to do before you show up to an event Look into the people that are going to the event, the speakers, the, you know, the people that are going to be there, the person that put the event together. Do a little research. Do a little research. Don't just show up there. You're just asking for shit. Okay. So who are they? What projects do you like that they did? How do you feel like you contribute? That way, when you go in, you have all the ammo you need to just kill it. So if you're speaking to somebody that has, let's say, um, another podcast and your goal is to get on the podcast, listen to the podcast, see if the podcast is even worth getting on. Don't follow a bandwagon and don't follow a hype because it might be a podcast that doesn't align with your values and yeah. it doesn't have to be a podcast. It could be many other things. But, you know, when we walk in a room, I've been to many events with Brian. All right. When we walk in a room, we dominate because we know exactly what we want to do and what we want to bring to the table. And we've done our research. Yep. Another thing that really helps is bringing a buddy along. OK, a buddy that you've worked with, a buddy that could be a good reference point for you, a, a good credibility. I always somebody from my team is always with me. It's usually Michelle. I bring, well, I'll bring Kevin along. Gio's always with me. Gio's always putting every event together, whether it's the Hustle Inspire Hustle events, the Epic Talks events for the Millionaire Mentor with G Events Group. Gio's always there showing support. Now we got Jonah in the house. We're in the Hamptons. We got a deal. Jonah here. Jonah used to work at UADV, my agency, a few years back, and we build a, a fantastic relationship. We're all here in the Hamptons together validating each other and showing people that we're a network of people that work hard and we're worth working with so if just it's just just you because it's been be me be before before I had a team it was just yeah. me inform yourself inform yourself about what you want to do if you want to ask for something make sure you know exactly what it is concrete that you want so you don't sound like you're lost a lot of these guys you got to realize it happens to me all the time I go to these events I stop speaking and 200 people try to talk to me it's very hard to process everything it's very hard to remember people's names it's very hard to remember what they do where they live what their wants are and it's not that we're you know we don't want to remember we want to be rude in any way but it's just too many people so if you're you, you need to have an elevator pitch if you don't know what an elevator pitch is look it up have an elevator pitch be, make sure that you're able to close people in 60 to 90 seconds about exactly what it is that you're trying to tell them and based off how they respond to that you're going to be able to see if you could take the conversation a little bit further Brian, what do you think about that? Uh, you know, I, I agree with everything you said. You know, I spoke I spoke yesterday uh, at the I spoke yesterday at the event. A uh, kid came up to me and he was actually super introverted and he was asking me, you know, he was asking me the, almost this exact question uh, in, in the sense of how do I talk to girls? How do I network? How do I do this? How do I do that? And I was giving him some tips and advice and stuff like that. Number one, you want to walk through that place with dramatic amounts of confidence. Um, I, I noticed when I was talking to him, he kept looking away. He wasn't looking me in the eyes. And you know, not that that's like a disrespectful thing. But I'm like man, if you want some
some confidence. You want to be able to network. You got to look people in the eyes, make them feel like, you know, you, you have something to bring to the table. Now, there was also another speaker there yesterday, um, and I connected with a lot of the speakers after I spoke, and he was the only one out of every one of the speakers to then follow up with me and then send me a video recording saying, yo, it was great to meet you, so and so forth. That's a real G right there. That's a real G right there. And you know who I'm going to remember out of the 20 people that I met, or no, 20, out of the hundreds hundreds of people that were there, excuse me, uh, that I met, it's going to be him specifically because he took one minute out his day to send me a video saying, Great meeting you. It was a pleasure. And now I'm not going to forget that guy. And that, that, that gives me a little bit uh, a higher level of respect for someone like that that would do that. So when you're networking at these events, make sure, you know, again, me and Alex, we, we meet hundreds of people. After we talk, people want to come up and talk to us. Make sure you follow up with a DM. Make sure you follow up with something and, or send a video message. Send an audio recording because we're not going to remember who it is that came up to us. So all, you, you made a ton of great points on, on, you know, on that subject. Now, let's take a moment. Let's take a quick moment to shout out Simon, okay, from NetCon. Simon, Simon is a little phenom, okay? Hustler. Simon, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is 18 years old, and he is doing incredible events, bringing world-class keynote speakers to these events to bring value to his audience. Right now, we are in the Glass House mansion for the week for exactly this. It's a group of entrepreneurs, business owners, go-getters, hustlers, people that want to build their business. We're creating opportunities around the world to be able to do this. Yep. Instead of, I've talked about it before, instead of spending $400 on a pair of Gucci shoes or buying a bunch of unnecessary shit that you don't need, get on a plane. If you don't have money for an expensive ride, get on Spirit, okay? Come to an event, spend $100, $150, $200 an event, and speak to people that are going to propel your career to the next level because it may not seem like it. It may seem like you're not good enough. It may seem like you're not smart enough, like you're not prepared enough, but we're never really prepared enough. If everybody in life waited for the perfect moment for them to be prepared to jump and do something and pull the trigger, we would all be sitting on our ass. Yeah, no such thing as the, there is no such thing as the perfect moment. You do. You see something, you do it. Alrighty, hustlers, let's take a quick break. You're listening to the Hustle Inspires Hustle podcast with Alex Quinn on Revolver Podcast. So I wanted to take a moment to talk to you guys about a program that I've been using and I've actually have my whole team on it, family members, friends. It's really turned the way around my workflow has been for my business in the last few weeks. The program is called HoneyBook. It's an online business management tool that lets you control your client communication, bookings, contracts, and invoices all in one place. If you're a creative freelancer or small business owner, HoneyBook helps you stay organized with custom templates and automation tools. You can even use HoneyBook to consolidate services you already use like QuickBooks, Google Suite, and MailChimp. Right now, HoneyBook is offering our listeners 50% off with coupon code ALEX, A-L-E-X. The payments are flexible and the promotion applies to whether you want to pay monthly or annually. So go to HoneyBook.com using promo code ALEX, A-L-E-X. For 50% off. Now, let's talk okay. let, Let's talk a little bit about something that we were talking last night. We let's were here sitting by the beach last night, bro, with the whole team. And we were talking a little bit about the struggles of switching from a nine to five oh, yeah. to being independent. And that's something that's if somebody's listening to this right now, you may be somebody that doesn't own a business currently, but is thinking of having a side hustle or is even thinking of even leaving their job altogether and starting a business. Well, these networking tips, these events that we're talking about right play a key role in how that's going to develop for you. So let's talk a little bit about that. How, how was your transition from working for someone to then saying, let me put it all on the line because I believe right. in exactly what I'm doing. Okay. So my transition again is going to be different than other people's transition. Now talking about being inside the independent mindset, I'm not saying I, I, I feel like I had a slightly easier transition because of the fact that um, growing up, I went through a lot of stuff. You know, I, I lost my mother at an early age. I lost a lot of family members. My dad was at a commission while he was sick for a long period of time. So I was an independent kid from a young age and I was I, I always had side hustles. It was a consistent thing for me. Then in 2006, I unfortunately got into a little bit of legal trouble and I got fired from my nine to five. So I was thrown to the wolves. I didn't have a choice. I didn't I couldn't go back to a nine to five. There was no one. At that time, I couldn't get a job anywhere. I couldn't get yeah. a, I couldn't get a job anywhere. Not only could I not get a job anywhere, I couldn't get a job at the same place that fired me in a different department in the same building with the same people who knew me for four years. So, my transition was this: you're out on your own, do what you got to do. And when your back's against the wall like that, what do you do when your back's against the wall in a ring? You fight. So the first thing I did was I started throwing hip hop shows, started making money like that. That 
turned into an independent label, that turned into a printing business, that turned into a, a hip hop blog called getthatpapersun.com, that turned into a clothing line. It was one thing after another after another because when you can't go back to a nine to five, you have to hustle to make things happen. So that's how my transition t- took place. Now, th- I know people and I have a best friend of mine, I won't say his name and I love him to death, but um, he worked nine to fives all his life and he did great and he got sales awards. He, he did all kinds of amazing things in that world. But it, when it came time for him to, to be his own boss at another company and set his own appointments and work from home, unfortunately, he kind of fell flat on his face and he actually got demoted because he couldn't get himself inside the independent mindset. And it's extremely important as an entrepreneur that you get yourself very quickly into the uh, independent mindset. You set your own appointments, you discipline yourself, wake up early because you know what happens if you don't hustle, you get evicted, you lose your house or you're literally going to die. There is no steady paycheck coming in and it's a lot harder as an entrepreneur uh, in a sense to make money than it is to a nine to five. But as an entrepreneur, you're, the, the money you can make is endless. There is no cap. There is no, you're only going to make 55000 this year. If you want to make 150, it's possible. So, you know, you really need to get yourself inside the independent mindset and discipline yourself and write things down and, and set your own appointments and schedules if, if you want to be an entrepreneur these days. Now, guys, this is not coming from a random guy who's I just invited on the podcast. I know we didn't take a lot of time at the beginning to really talk about Brian's background. And that's because most of you guys that are listening have no interest in that. Now, really no interest in my background either. You guys really want to learn. You guys may know who we are and you guys want to learn from us. But what we're really trying to do right now is for for us to teach you guys exactly what you need to do. But Brian is an expert marketer. Brian has had TED Talks. Brian has had his own billboard up. Brian, like I mentioned, has been on TMZ. Brian has done hip-hop shows shows all around. Brian has world-class connections. Brian and I have great connections together. Let's talk about Hugo for a moment. Hugo Sanchez from Modi app. Modi app is an incredible app that you guys could be using to network. Obviously the topic of this podcast, if you guys are in an event and you guys can't afford an event, you know, I don't want to hear excuses because right now we're talking about going to events, getting on planes. If you don't have the money to do that, then you have no excuses because the Modi app is something that you could download for free. And if somebody is going to charge you for their time to connect with them, it's gonna be something that's gonna be an investment for you. Modi app is a platform for freelancers, entrepreneurs, creatives to be able to talk to each other face-to-face consulting. You could record the phone call. You could do all types of amazing things and it's geared around propelling your career to the next level. So big shout out to Modi app. I know you were with Hugo this week in New York. Hugo is one of the coolest guys in the city. You know, they got a bunch of bunch of cool people on there. Gary Vaynerchuk was recently on Modi app doing some calls. Uh, bro, the, the list goes on and on. Uh, yeah, I, I can name a hundred. Right? There's so many people on the Modi app. <laughs> you can name a hundred yeah. people, but generally, guys, if you guys are listening to this, uh, take the time, download the Modi app, connect with some really cool people. If not, find them on Instagram. Find us on Instagram. We're very, very approachable, um, very easy to get a hold of. Just be clear. I, I want to talk about something real quick that may happen to you, Brian. Uh, maybe it just happens to me, but there's a lot of people that hit me up on Instagram DM saying, hey, let's collaborate. Hey, I, w- I want to work with you. But that's literally all they're saying. You have to understand, guys, that we are traveling the world at any given moment, talking to hundreds and thousands of people all at the same time, thousands of people listening to the podcast, thousands of people watching the videos, hundreds of people on stages. You got to be clear and to the point. And we were talking about that when we first started this podcast. Don't just hit up people saying, hey, I want a collab. Make it clear. What do you want to do? What do you like about me and my platform and what I bring to the table that could benefit you? And in exchange, how can that benefit me? As long, guys, as long as you have that formula of, hey, I want to give you this and in exchange, I want you to give me that. It's called bartering. It's called strategic partnerships. It's what I specialize in. It's one of the things that Brian specializes in. Knowing how to leverage and manage relationships so you could grow your business. If you can't afford a plane ride to come to NetCon event, that's fine. Use the Instagram DM. It's free. Stop fucking scrolling on your feed, looking at girls' asses, or looking at Gucci shoes, and build your career because you're worthy of doing it. You know, Some people like to feel sorry about themselves or like they're not smart enough. It's not about smarts. I've been saying this for years at events. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Hustle beats talent when... Uh, talent doesn't hustle. 100%. It, it, it's clear, Oof, man. It's you know, crazy. like we were talking about law of average. If you own a small business, hit up a bunch of people, hit up mentors, people that will coach you and teach you and will get you through the obstacles that you're currently facing through proper guidance. Right. You could find these people on Modi app. You could find these people on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, 
anything and everything I just mentioned is free. So whatever bullshit excuse you're giving yourself as to why you cannot build your business or be your better self, drop that shit right now. Because we've all been in fucked up situations. Me. I've been with no money, had no idea how I was going to pay my staff. Things stolen, things disappeared, business deals went south, mental health, me going through depression, hating shit. Um, feeling terrible about myself, like I, like a failure, like I could, like I fucked everything up. But that's just moments that we go through that we need to learn how to overcome. Every single successful person that you see out there that's flexing or not flexing on social media has gone through a world of shit to get to wherever they are. You got to be willing through to eat shit, even if it was for ten years of eating straight shit. But as long as you're sure about what you're doing, and as long as you know that you love that. Those 10 years mean nothing when you compare it to the rest of your life of doing exactly what you want to do with a proper, successful, structured business structure. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, some of these people, some of these people that you feel have this overnight success, even if somebody has a one hit wonder, I promise you, if you look into the background, it took them 10 years to make a one hit wonder for them to get to that point. So stop with the, I'm sorry. I, I don't believe in that feeling sorry for yourself. And I know it sounds shitty, but in this world, Kind of nobody cares about your problems. Everybody has no, issues. Not kind of. Nobody, nobody cares yeah, about no, your problems. Yeah. You know, nobody cares about your problems. You just need to get over all the adversity that you go through. And you know what? Use that adversity p- to propel you forward. Every time I've been in a jacked up situation, someone dies, a girl screws me over, whatever it is, it lights a, a dramatic fire under, under me and it actually helps to propel me forward. Not that I look for shitty situations to happen, but when they happen, it lights a fire under me and I get so much more accomplished. So you Use all that negativity. Use all that crap that you've been through to make stuff happen in your life. Channel it. Channel it. If you're in a fucked up situation right now, things are not going your way, channel that energy. Channel it. It's the perfect, perfect time for you to build yourself. If you're at your lowest point, great. You could build yourself up higher. I talked to, to that about a friend recently, and it was very, very relevant. If you're at a point where you feel like things are a little bit shaky or things are a little bit screwed up, that's probably the best moment for you to reinvent yourself. Absolutely. And I talked about that in a podcast recently with my buddy Nolan Carroll. You guys could listen to the episode, and it's about reinventing yourself. He was an NFL player, mm-hmm. okay? He did fantastic. He played for many teams in the NFL, right. and he became an investor. And, you know, that's a t- difficult change. Going from an athlete where, you know, your sole focus every day is to make sure that you perform, right. your body performs, to then ma- make sure that a machine performs, a, a business, a business structure performs, it's difficult. So you got to be able to face challenges and face adversity. Yes. And you also got to realize is that time, time is on your side. It doesn't matter how old you are. It right. doesn't matter how old you are. Most people that make it, most of these rich people that you see, mm-hmm. wealthy people, whether it's because they have a lot of money or because they're rich in happiness, they've gone through a lot of stuff and they're... All of them are mostly older, oh, man. Absolutely. Mor- you know, Morgan Freeman started his acting career damn near what, in his 40s. That's why, you know, when you see Morgan Freeman and you always say how he's always looked old, that's because he started when he was like 40 or 50 yeah, years old. Like, that's so <laughs> funny that you mentioned that. I love Morgan Freeman. Oh, he's awesome. But man. anyways, guys, guy. guys, if you're yeah. listening to this, let's get to the point. You guys go to events. You guys go anywhere that you want to talk to people about how to build your business. Do not waste people's time because time is money. Yep. If you're speaking to somebody that does something that you look up to, obviously you look up to it for a reason. They're a busy person. They're a person that's done a lot of dope shit. Be prepared. Just like when you go to school, you know how much it sucks to go to school and not be prepared for your test and you're freaking the (laughs) fuck out because you know you're going to fail and you're going to turn that shit in. You're going to get a zero because you didn't study that night before. Well, maybe you don't like school, but you know, school teaches us a lot of important things. It teaches us accountability. It teaches us punctuality. It teaches us to get shit done. So get those values, read some books, go to events, be informed before you try and approach somebody, have the proper information. And I guarantee you guys that you guys are going to get what you want. If you guys are having a little bit of trouble with this, the Hustle Inspires Hustle Network is a great network for you guys to tap into. Go on hustleinspireshustle.com, sign up for the newsletter, check out the website. We send actionable tips all the time about budgeting, about meeting people, about connecting with people, about building your business. We actually send you material that will help you build your business. Connect with us on social media. Use our hashtag. Hit up Brian. Brian's a great guy to be able to approach. Brian does collaborations with people all around, and he's a guy that really has his head on straight, okay? And he's a guy that's always willing to help the youth. I'll give you a perfect example of a very smart kid right before we close off this podcast. And I want to give a very, very special shout out to my boy, Prince Ali. Prince Ali is a magician who just graduated from high school, what, like two weeks ago, bro? I think two weeks ago now. Ali 
has been one of the very, very, very few people that I've met over the last year at all of these events and all of these online sessions that we've had that has actually used these connections and has actually used, you know, he's, he's actually been himself. He says, right. guys, you know, I need help. Guys, how do, should I do this? How should I do that? And there's nothing wrong with asking for help. I ask for help all the time. And, and Ali is actually here in New York with us right now at the NetCon Glass Mansion event. Mm -hmm. Yep. He's been in multiple cities with us and we're all helping him because he asked for the proper help and he brings something to the table for us every single time. Absolutely. You know, and what I like about Prince Ali and what I've noticed that he does as opposed to a lot of other people, you know, when he asks for that help, which it's hard to do for a lot of people to ask for help or ask for advice, not only does he ask for that advice, but he applies it. And executes it immediately. He executes it immediately. I gave him, an, uh, you know, advice about how to get booked on shows, uh, uh, magic shows, and this guy applied what I said and created his own thing and became his own headliner. So that's what impresses me, guys. If you're going to take advice from someone, don't sit there and write notes and not apply it and don't listen. When, you, when, you, when you're listening to people that have knowledge that you may not have, take that knowledge and apply it. And once you apply it, you'll start to see things happen. Don't be someone who is unteachable. Look, me and Alex know a ton of things about a ton of subjects, and I still listen to people that know more than me, and I still apply what they tell me because I do not know everything. As much as I think I do, I do not know everything. So it's important to take what people tell you and apply it to real-life situations. All right, guys, you heard it. Apply yourself. Get out there. Build your business. I hope this lights a fire under your ass because you know what? It's possible. We're a bunch of immigrants in this room right now. We had all the odds stacked against us. Every single person in this fucking room has had hell and back to deal with. And we're in the Hamptons. We're here as a community. We're here as a group. We're here growing each other's businesses. Surround yourself with people who uplift you because hustle inspires hustle. Hustle inspires hustle, guys. Let's go. Let's go. Alrighty, guys. That concludes this week's episode of the Hustle Inspires Hustle podcast with Alex Quinn. Remember to tune in every Monday for new episodes and stay connected with us on Instagram and YouTube for updates and exclusive content, including a video segment of this week's podcast. You can find us on at Mr. Alex Quinn with one N and at Hustle Inspires Hustle. Remember to surround yourself with people who uplift you because hustle inspires hustle.